Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here from Friday Night Flies once again at the White River Fly Shop of Fast Pro Shops in Tawasson. Um, so last week, Jordan and I got out fishing and finally got him into a steelhead. Um, still waiting on my first one. We got him one beautiful, beautiful fish. Um, throw up a photo here just so you can see it. But it's, uh, yeah, that was a hell of a day. Uh, first run, it was like the first couple casts, it was game on right away. Um, so he caught that little guy. I well, shouldn't say little, it's still pretty big, probably in the double digit range. Um, but caught that one on a popsicle style fly with a stinger hook. So this week I'm going to, I've been tying up a bunch, just you never know. It's one of those things. Um, so this is going to be kind of a medium sized steelhead fly. Um, in that popsicle kind of family um, called a hobo spay. Um, so it goes together pretty easy. I almost want to say it's a guide style fly. Um, depends how in depth you want to get it with it. So, um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Instead of using the guinea feathers on the body, I'm going to be using some stuff that we got from uh, Schnook Wind Outfitters. Um, this is a pretty magical material right here. So you guys are going to like the look of that. Um, yeah, it's an unweighted fly. You can add weight to it with a bead or a cone head or whatever you want. Um, stinger hook off the back. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Uh, so those trout spay guys, you'll probably like this fly as well. Um, like I said, it goes together pretty easy. Guide style fly. Um, if, you, if you don't mess around with dubbing and stuff like that too much, there's all those shortcuts that we can do. Um, but yeah, let's just get to it. All right. So let's almost get right to it. As you can see, I got my uh, got a hook shank and a stinger hook already attached with intruder wire. Um, there's a lot of different hooks that you can use for this fly. One of my favorites is these OPST swing hooks. Um, these things come barbless, which is awesome. Here in BC, everything's single barbless anyway in the rivers. But that's an awesome hook. Another good choice is these Owner SSWs. Um, they come in size two or size four. These are great stinger hooks. They do have barbs, so you just gotta mash them down before you use them. Um, so that's what I got on this one. Just to give you an idea of what this fly looks like. That's a bubblegum pink one with some lavender. Shut off that radio. Here's a blue and chartreuse. So pretty deadly looking fly. Here's a black and blue. And tie this one up in all your favorite steelhead colors. Goes together pretty quick, like I said. Um, yeah, let's get down to it. So I've just got a shank in a HMH um, tube fly adapter. Um, I find they hold hooks really nice. And as you can see, I don't have the wire tied all the way back. I'm actually going to trim that shank, so you can make these as big or small as you want. The ones I've been tying are in that two to two and a half inch range, so nothing too crazy. Um, like I said, there's a few little twists that I do to speed this process up a little bit for this fly. Um, normally you'd tie a butt of dubbing, a guinea feather, and a body of dubbing, and then you wrap the, the guinea up, and then you tie in the marabou in front. I'm going to do it with more synthetics. So for the butt of this fly, we're going to be doing like a fuchsia, and uh, and lavender one. So for the butt of this fly, I've got this, I believe this is Semperfly uh, 15 millimeter chenille. This is pretty sweet stuff. This is great for your booby flies and uh, blobs and all that kind of stuff too. So this is the hot pink. We got these from Susan up at Chinook Wind Outfitters. Sorry it's taken so long for me to play with this stuff, but it took a while to get it and I had a few other uh, flies in mind anyway. So now we're getting to it. You just need a few wraps just to get a nice butt going on this fly. Maybe four wraps or so. As you can see, it's a pretty full chenille, so it creates a nice little ball at the back here. Okay. Trim that away. And we'll just wrap back on this just to really lock it down. As you can see, we've got a nice little ball there. So one of the nicest materials that I think I got from you, Susan, was this mirror flash. So it's almost like a, it's essentially a polar chenille. Um, so it has some UV aspects to it, but it's got um, a super reflective flash in there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So it's called mirror flash. This stuff is awesome. So this is like a light pink. I'm not sure what color it would be on your site. I'm about to dig around and see if I can find it. This stuff I'm definitely going to load up on. This stuff is awesome. So... Tie it in with the string on top and all the fibers going down, just like you would any uh, Palmer chenille or similar materials like that. And just wrap back, really lock it down. Just kind of tuck that out of the way. 
Now we're going to make a dubbing loop. So I'm going to pull some thread out, good four or five inches, place my finger on top, pull the thread back over top of the shank. I'm going to wrap twice around the shank, and then I'm going to throw my bobbin over the loop twice. And then I'm going to wrap back on this just to close it up. Take this right back to where that chenille ball is. And now I'll wrap my thread forward. Kind of slide in here a little bit. And now I can just keep that. Actually, you know what? I'll hang on to that. I'll just tuck it away. Don't worry about it. So for the body of this fly, I'm going to use some lavender iced up. This is a wicked color. Um, if you can find it. I believe I got this one at Pacific Angler. Go say hi to Jordan down there. I'm going to take a half decent little clump here. And I'm just going to even up all the fibers. I'm going to pull them and stack them on top of each other over and over again. Then I'm going to kind of just roll it in my fingers just to kind of bunch it all together. And now I'm going to rip it in half. And stack these up again. So now we've got a pretty decent wide chunk. And I'm actually going to rip it in half again. So now it's about a quarter of the length that it was. And this is what I'm going to put in my dubbing loop. So I've got my loop. Just open it up nice and wide. Slide the dubbing in. And here I can now space it out. Actually, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to take my dubbing spinner. I'm just going to give it a couple twists. Once I get this sitting in there properly. Just a couple turns, just to kind of lock it in place. Now I'll take my scissors or bodkin or whatever. Just put my finger along the back and just space out all this dubbing. So you want it to be fairly sparse. Just kind of space it out. You can always add more after if we need to. So I've got a couple inches there. Now I'm just going to spin my dubbing spinner. I'm just going to let that twist up into a nice rope. Just like so. I'll just try to untrap any fibers that may have gotten stuck in there. That's fine. And now I'm just going to wrap this up the shank here. Just one wrap in front of the other. Kind of stroke some of the fibers back if you want. I really like this color combination. I think it looks pretty sweet. Should look deadly in the water. I'm just going to keep wrapping here. Just a little shy, that's okay. So I'll just trap that dubbing loop. And if we're a little shy, we can add just a little pinch more. Doesn't need to be much, we can just dub this like we normally would. Just twist it onto the thread. Always twisting in the same direction. Gets it on there nice and good. I'm just going to tighten that up just a smidge. There we go. We want to leave enough room there because we've got to have the head and uh, some flash and a few other things. So it's a marabou. So I'll just take a chunk of Velcro, trusty popsicle stick, just kind of brush that out a little bit. This looks a little crazy, but once it's in the water, all these fibers are just going to kind of mold together. Alright, just like so. So now I'm going to take this mirror flash. I'm going to take a full turn at the back. I'm going to take two or three. Really kind of seeding that down into that dubbing. Don't need to counter rib this um, with wire or anything. It's it's on a pretty tough cord, so it's not going to rip on you. Fish aren't going to chew through it. Let's just check my focus there. Keep moving this camera. Yeah, it looks all right. So this looks like a big globby mess right now. Don't worry. This fly really comes into its own once we get that marabou on there. Just going to tidy up its head just a smidge, so it's not as steep of a step. Now we can take our Velcro again and get some of that ice dub, lavender dub, poking through. 
this color combination I find is, like I said, it's pretty sweet. Just kind of stroke all those fibers back. Kind of wet your fingers and just pull them back. Keep them out of the way. So I love that pink mirror flash. That stuff is deadly. So I have a piece of uh, fuchsia marabou here. And do this up in all your favorite steelhead colors. So I'm just going to find the tip. Wet my fingers just to kind of get them under control a little bit. I'm gonna tie it in here. What I'll do, I'll chase that tip to the front, double it back around, I'll trim that away. That way it won't pull out on you. Again, you kind of wet your fingers and just pull this back. Careful that stinger hook back there. Now we're just going to wrap this forward. So you can make this as full or as sparse as you like. I like to be just a touch more on the, the full side than too sparse. I think I'm going to end up using this whole feather. That looks about good there. Got the stem here, I can kind of cross that over if I'm lucky. Right, let's hang on here. Just wrap that back just a smidge. Of course, now that shank's spinning on me. Of course, technical difficulties when you're tying live, eh? It always seems to happen. One more time. Nice and easy. Just hold that in place there. Just get one wrap. Hold it down. There we go. Another wrap. You gotta love marabou and how unruly it can be sometimes. Trim that away. Now you can you can take that velcro and you kind of brush this back. Like so, just so it's all kind of flowing in the right direction. Kind of wet your fingers, stroke all this back again. Be careful that stinger hook, you don't want to stab yourself. All right, now we'll just wrap back on this. Let's get it all flown in the direction that we want. And really just secure it all. Just a few wraps to tidy up that head. You can see that's really big profile up front, and that really tapers down to that nice teardrop shape that we like with steelhead flies. So you could actually finish it just like that, and that would fish quite well. To take this to the next level, I've got some lavender Amherst here. I uh, picked this up from Susan. This is beautiful stuff. Love the dye job on it. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna grab yourself three or four fibers, doesn't really matter whatever you're feeling. On the original version of this pattern, it would actually have Amherst on the bottom sides as well, so it kind of makes an X. I just like to have them as wings, like a wing accent on the side. So I'll we'll see how, kind of, how I'm putting these here. So my marabou extends past the hook. I want the Amherst to fall just shy of that, so kind of right into the inside of the, the hook there. Got a couple wraps there. Get that in place. We'll do another three strands on your side. So you kind of see how I'm placing this here. With all these fibers, you just kind of run your scissors through it. That kind of isolates a section for you. This stuff will Velcro to itself quite easily. Trim that away. Now I'm going to tie this in on your side. Just like so. Kind of want a little bit of an angle, not going straight up, not directly on the side, somewhere right in between. Placement is all up to you. Now we can trim those butts. Again, lock it down. Some nice snug wraps in there. 
And last but not least, we're going to add a little bit more flash. It's kind of an overwing. So I've got some of this purple Crelex here. This stuff is money. Um, here's some chartreuse as well. This stuff has some wicked flow to it. Nice and limp. Beautiful colors. So this I'm going to extend back just past the marabou. Go as long or short as you like. This I'm going to tie in right on top. And I'll wrap back on that just a smidge. Here I'm just going to pull that wing over top. So again, you can go as sparse or as heavy as you like with this. Once we get that kind of tied in, got to drop it, of course. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to kind of stagger cut that a little bit. Just so not all the butt ends are the same length. And that's going to sit right on top. So we got, yeah, I kind of like that one longer one there. So now we'll just tidy up the head. And do a whip finish. Why that keeps spinning on me, I don't know. Because I've got that cranked in there pretty good. Let's see here. Situated how I want. And last step, you probably guessed it, sole res bone dry. Polish off the head here. Secure all those wraps. A little bit of pink shone through there. I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure the fish don't care. If I was really worried about it, I'd just take a sharpie to it. And we'll zap that to cure it. As you can see, that marabou and that, that dubbing underneath, or not the dubbing, the chenille underneath, you can see has a really nice pop to it. And there you have it, the Hobo Spay. So like I said, just to finish this guy off, I would just cut, I'll cut that little extra hook shank off. You don't really have to. I'm gonna do it more for myself. The Hobo Spay. Just a little slow roll for you. All right, let's head on up and sign out. All right, there you are, guys. Another steelhead fly for you. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, sorry, Susan, it took so long to get to your materials. Uh, I know you're probably waiting on me to do something. But I finally got them. Finally had some time to sit around and tie some stuff up with them. So this is a fly I'm really looking uh, looking forward to fishing. Uh, hopefully I got some stories of me getting into a steelhead uh, for you next week. We shall see. Uh, Jordan's got his, so it's my turn. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Again, super simple, easy to tie, quick one to fill your boxes with, guide style for sure. Sometimes these steelhead flies can take a while. Um, yeah, if you've got any uh, flies that you guys want to see us tie, hit us up on our Facebook page or shoot us an email. Leave comments down below the video um, and all that jazz. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next week. Friday Night Flies would like to thank the following sponsors. Superfly, Solarez, Chinook Wind Outfitters, Dr. Slick, Griffin, Stonefoe.